What's up? Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, Boogie to 988, coming at you live once again through the power of the internet, and you are listening to the Big Stack Podcast. Now with 17,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, now with 49 patrons, um, and hey, I just wanted to give a big shout out to the folks who subscribe to us on YouTube, the folks who subscribe to us on Patreon. We have now given out those $50 gift cards. Congratulations to Simon999, our patron who uh, got a $50 Amazon gift card. And congratulations Congrats. to Twitter user Joseph Hawk 88 uh, Congratulations hey. on your $50 Amazon gift card. And as nice. we continue to grow that Patreon, we plan to continue to give back as frequently as often. So you want to check us out? We are at patreon.com slash the big stack podcast. And I think you'd be glad you did. Um, just a dollar a month, just a dollar a month can make all the difference in the world. So we really appreciate for those of you chosen to do that. Once again, I am joined with my good friend, Ellis. Ellis, how was your week? Hey, my week was pretty good. I, uh, have been playing some video games and I've been been looking forward to doing this. What you been playing? Well, uh, I'm playing a lot of Smash with you, Mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. And, um, your Pac-Man is bullshit. Yeah. I want to get that out there. Yeah, I've been uh, trying to focus Cruel, K. Rule, but uh, he's just so slow. I don't know. He's pretty He's pretty fast for as meaty as he is. Yeah, I need to go back to Pac-Man. Jacob, what about you? Hey. <laughs> uh, I play Isabel now. <laughs> yeah. No she, longer best friends with Villager? Well, there's well, just a better Villager, and Isabel. that's Isabel. Yeah. Yep. Isabel's great. Yeah. What do you like about Isabel? Like, I mean, other than the fact that she's adorable. Uh, well, I like the factor of people should feel bad for hitting her because she's a cute little dog. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I like the fishing pole. It's uh, some bullshit. If uh, the person I'm fighting doesn't know how to deal with it, yep. uh, I get to just keep them off the stage forever. And yep. uh, I love doing that. I, and I don't know how to deal with it. So <laughs> we <laughs> did it. have to deal with it yet. I'm not looking forward to it. We had everybody over to the house last night, including the boys. And uh, we had a, uh, was it 12 person smash tournament or nine? I had, no, it was 12. Uh, we had 12, 12 I think. Yeah, it was 12. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I lost out round one to our friend Jason. Mm, Jason. And, it, and here's the thing, man. I wish I could get good at that game. There's just something in my brain that just doesn't make me good at that game. I'm good at, like, Mortal Kombat, and I am good at, like, um, Injustice. That, that makes sense to me because it's kind of like a blow for blow, and then like, the combo systems make sense for me there. Smash Brothers is all about aerial stuff, and I just can't do the aerial stuff. My, I just need to practice, Play very differently. Yeah, it's a very that was different game. one of the questions that uh, we got from one of our wonderful Patreon subscribers, which is, what does everybody main in Smash? So I know that Jacob mains, uh, used to be Villager. I almost said Villager, but friendship ended with Villager, now best friends with Isabel. Yes. Uh, I can't get enough Wii Fit Trainer. Love that soccer ball. Mm-hmm. And Boogie, have you picked one yet? I wanted it to be K. Rule. I wanted it to be Bowser. The heavies are just not that good in this game. So I, I'm looking at Pichu and training with Pichu. Um, and I, I think it's going to end up being Pichu. Uh, she's just so... Okay. She, he or she is just so top tier. Um, and I see I see other people play it. I'm like, I want to learn to do that. But I guess it's K. Rule. It's just, I mean, there's another diabetic <laughs> crocodile out there in the world. And he's in the video game. And I like being represented in the video game. <laughs> yeah, you do have that big armored belly. Right. One of your eyes is bigger than the other two. And I got the scales from the diabetes killing my skin, so that's nice. Yeah. And I got. And the, you hate Donkey Kong. Oh, fuck. Kong. Donkey Kong, right in his ear, man. That banana eating bitch. Right in his ear. Yeah. I remember when Cranky See, that, Kong that's a was. That's way to get hearing aids. That's a bad joke. That's a really good joke. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think they taught <laughs> math? At Hogwarts? Yes. No, you don't need like, math. Besides having magic where wizards just fucking dumb. That's something that always bothered me. It doesn't seem like they were getting a real education at Hogwarts. They they might in the books, but in the movies, it's all about magic. No, nah, it's all about magic. There's no... I, I think they have, like, magic history, but... I don't know. Like, Muggles did some shit, too, right? Do they know about Lincoln? They are English. Maybe they are English, yeah. But what do they know about, like, Churchill? Do they, yeah, do they know about Churchill? Because here's the thing, I th- I, my impression when I was watching the movies is that when they are out from um, Hogwarts, they were in regular school. Is that how that works in the books? That would be really weird. No, if I they don't were think all so. Like eighteen year olds going to primary school. 
No, I think he means that like on their summer break from Hogwarts, they go or oh. they they like go to regular school and then summer break they go to Hogwarts. But I don't think that's it at all. I think no, they're all just fucking they're dumb. Good. They're yeah. all just they're they're big dumb. I mean, like you know, they how to make they know how to make potions and yeah, but not rocket ships. Wands out of other people's hands because that's what they do or whatever. I guess it's like having a trade skill, so you don't really need like math. <laughs> So you have, like the magic. Uh, I mean, like right basic now. math's still pretty important. I don't remember any of them ever being taught to read, or you know, write a paper. Maybe there's a spell that teaches you math, like Learnius Mathematicus. That's probably what it would be called. Someone somewhere just uh, learning math. math. Yep. Hey, there's a, Mathematicus. You all know math now. You're there, welcome. There's a Subscribe really good video people. out there. I want to recommend to you guys. My, it's my friend uh, Brizzy Voices. You can find her on Twitter and YouTube as Brizzy Voices. And she does like uh, a lot of different stuff. But she trained her dog to her only commands. You can find this on, on Twitter. You can find the video on Twitter. You can find it on YouTube. She, her dog will only reply re respond to harry potter spells as 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 the command oh okay so yeah, you rather can say, than like come sit stay yeah you can say spelly armis right it's right it's 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 uh, levitatus and stayus and edis the treatise i don't know man edis the treatise this treatise man lick us the peanut butter wherever i put us it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was funny <laughs> lick us the Hey guys, sometimes we talk about video games every once in a while. Sometimes we talk about video games. Is that what we do here? Yeah, it, uh, rarely on occasion. What what enemy do you think you've killed more than anything else in video games? Ooh. Like aliens or you know boars in World boars? of Warcraft. I was going to say fucking boars. Yeah. I think Do it's got to I think it's got to be froglocks at this point, man. I killed a lot of froglocks in EverQuest. Okay. Are frog locks like frog <laughs> warlocks? Well, they were frog, like frog they're like locks. frog humanoid frogs. Now, uh, you can't kill frog locks anymore in uh, EverQuest now because the chemicals in the water turned them gay, and now it's a hate crime. But uh, you used to be able to kill frog locks okay. by the thousands. I thought it was because EverQuest is an old dead game that nobody plays. Oh, no, you can still play that game. You can go download it right now. There's frog locks all over that game. You can play a frog lock now if you want to. Oh, ooh. But the I haven't water, gotten to play a gay frog in a video game before. The water has turned all the frogs well, okay. gay, so I don't I think there'll be any more. I've, Frogger on. sexual preferences? I've played Frogger. Yeah? I bet. I don't know. I guess we don't know. We but don't know. I don't even know if Frogger's a boy frog or a frog. Frogger, Frogger, blank canvas. You can project whatever you That's want true. onto yeah. Frogger. He's he's like Gordon Freeman. Frogger, the ultimate everyman. <laughs> See, that's how we used to have representation, representation in video games. Because it was just who, you, whatever you want this frog to be, he, that's what this frog is. It could be like the frog from the old Looney Tunes cartoon. As long as you want it to be a frog. <laughs> right, as long as you want it to be a frog. That's the only thing we've written. The rest of it's up to you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Theater sure. of the mind. Do you guys have any uh, video game stuff you want to talk about? Hey, let's, uh, let's, I've I got to make a video about this, but let's dump all over Bethesda a little bit more. So uh, again, yeah. So let's it's talk about my new hobby. Let's talk about Fallout seventy six some more because there's new stuff that's happened. But for those of you who are not stuff. aware, how could there be more? We have a video game, and is it an asset flip? And it just took the bad parts of Fallout four and made it a new video game. Um, and here's the problem: there's a lot of difficulty in creating an online game. Balance issues is a real yeah. thing. And so here's part of the story that nobody is telling. Um, they forgot to make items bind on account. So there's a lot of trading going on in that game. I, I don't know if there are bind on account or bind on character items. Um, I, there probably is. They, I would hope they would foresee that far. But a lot of things are not. So there is actually a marketplace on eBay where you can buy items directly from players who will then meet you in the game and give you the item in exchange for real-world cash. Now, the problem with that is I would kind of be okay with that if they... I'm, there's probably no way I'm okay with that, actually. But uh, but here's the biggest issue. Um, there's so many item dupes in the game. It's so possible to duplicate items. It's so easy to cheat. You can, you can stack the bobbleheads. The way bobbleheads work in this game, they give you a one-hour buff when you find a bobblehead. <clears throat> Yeah. And it's possible to uh, stack bobbleheads so you can kill stuff you shouldn't be able to kill if you use that exploit. I don't know if that's fixed yet or not, but it was something people were doing for a while to kill stuff you shouldn't be able to kill, to get stuff you shouldn't be able to get, and then selling those items for real world cash. Now, yeah, that's, that's, bad. Bad. that's bad enough, but the reason I tell you that is because someone discovered what is known as the developer room. 
you've ever played Fallout 4, if you've ever played Skyrim, you may not be aware, but if you use console commands, there's a room in the game where you can go find every single item that's in the game, which is fine in a single player game. Who cares? Who cares? Right? Because it's a single player game. You want to cheat in your single player game, who cares? In a multiplayer game, that's a problem. So what people are able to sneak into the developer room and start snagging up items, including, and this is where it gets insane, including items that have not yet been yet released items that are planned future DLC that they plan to sell you. So these same people have been snagging up those items by going into the developer room, swapping them to a new account. They'll ban the accounts that make it into the developer room, but there's no way for them to currently track who got the items and where the items got muled to. Then they're selling these items you can't even purchase through the Adam store yet. Have they never, like... And they're selling them on eBay. Do they just, you know, it all just goes out the window? I don't, I, I, I don't know. So here's, here's one of the funniest parts about this. This is insane. So one of the people that got caught doing this showed his ban letter. And here's what his ban letter says. And I I would bring it up and read it to you directly. I didn't prepare it for the stream. But in general, Bethesda says, we will reinstate your account if you will tell us how you got into the developer room. They don't even know how it happened? No. How do they not have server logs? How can they not check? Well, I guess they do have server logs in that they know this character got into that room. So there must have been some sort of alarm or alert. But they can't seem to figure out how he did it. So if they will, if he will write them and explain to them how he did it, they will unban that account. That's the world we live in with Bethesda uh, right now. I mean, usually when this kind of stuff happens, it's like, I don't know, weird manipulating between client and server stuff. With this game, it could be anything. I wouldn't be surprised if he's like, I just walked in. Yeah. It's just behind that tree over there, and I just like, <laughs> I walked in. And, you know, there's a door. I was hunting a mutant, and there it was, labeled and everything. Right. Yep. Secret dev room. Do not enter. Free <laughs> ham. Right. Now, I in my research, I did find out one of the ways people think it is happening, and it basically involves a teleport exploit. Um, and that's all I'll say because I don't want to like encourage that kind of behavior. Obviously. Sure. I don't want to tell you to. Are you talking go, about the like scammers' behavior or the the exploiters' all, behavior, or all just of it, or even Bethesda's somebody who just behavior. enjoys everybody, just across the board? But I can't believe Bethesda. They they fell into so many of the obvious traps, um, like like people having a secondary market on your game and selling caps for cash and selling items for cash and and not putting a stop to that, not planning ahead for that, uh, and not creating. Most of the things in the game, powerful items being bind on character, a bind on account, or something to that effect. But all those obvious things, there's just things that did not think through, and that I can easily fault them for. Um, but hey, it's a it's a new thing. We've never done an online game before, so we didn't know. I, I'll give them some credit there. But you left the developer room on live servers. What are you thinking? How is that possible? How is it possible that you left? The developer room listed with every single item in the game, including unreleased items in... I can't even fathom that kind of... That is incompetence. I don't even think it's okay to, to say, oh, well, see, it's our first shot at multiplayer are bad. You're not a small indie developer. This stuff has been around for decades now. Go read a book about it. It definitely exists. All of these same traps that they've fallen into are things that World of Warcraft has had to deal with very publicly in the past. You can look at that example and like see how they handled it. I'm not saying that they handled it perfectly, but that they would be so unprepared blows my mind. My friend Scott Hartzman wrote a book about these problems that he came across in EverQuest and basically gave that book away to other competing developers trying to explain the things that you will experience when developing an online game and an MMORPG and how to get around it and how to fix it. And I think it was originally meant to be an internal document, if I remember correctly. Um, I've never read it. It's just been rumored. uh, But it it, it fell out, and everybody in the industry, and I've heard that people uh, at World of Warcraft use that Bible to help build the game. But all that stuff, that was 25 years ago. This is all so obvious and so public and so clear now at this point. How do you not know? How do you not know? That, oh my God! It's like I honestly think that it is not. Uh, uh, they don't know. It's that they don't care. Right? Maybe. I, right. Yeah. 
and I think six people on that team still, and they're just scrambling. And yep. I, guarantee, I guarantee that there's people on that team that do care. I think it's the bosses that don't. So they they yes. probably went to him and like, yes. hey, guys, listen, we got a problem. This is going to come up. And like, uh, how much is it going to cost to fix that? I have more than a dollar. Okay, then don't. Just don't. Who cares? Just Whatever. don't. Who cares? Who cares? It's sure. just, yeah, we're, just, we're still going to make money. We're it's not gotta, charging per month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just, I, I, I feel so bad for Bethesda at this point. I feel so bad for everybody that works at Bethesda at this point. I just, it's so frustrating for them. I, mm-hmm. I just, I don't know. Since a lot of them, like, it's out of their control, right? Like you said, it's it's probably corporate decisions and not people on the team. Right. All right. Yeah. Um, and that, I, I, that, that's that been the thing for almost every gaming company that I've ever known. Like, I used to be really close with the folks over at EverQuest. And I got to know, you know, your, your Scott Hartsman, your Paul Caracos, and those guys. And, and, you know, when Scott went on to work on Rift, I got to come with him and work on, you know, to play Rift and, and talk to the development team. And, and that's how it always is, right? Like, you would talk to Paul, and Paul is really worried about the trade skills, but he's got only six weeks, and he's the one guy who's in charge of it, and he's got to get his get it all together and he's got six weeks to release and he's already not sleeping and he's already not seeing his wife and he's already not going home so there's only so much work he can do and he'll tell his boss look i need another person and they're like ah oh, we're well, everybody's busy we don't have the budget for it paul just do the best you can and he does the best he can and it's i mean paul always did a great job you know that's why i use him as an example but it's just, we heard that was 24 years ago and now you know we just heard about rockstar doing the same thing to their employees Mm-hmm. It's just, it's the culture of, of game development. And the more I, I get to know these developers, the more I get to know these developers, the more I get to know people who create these wonderful games, I love to scream about the company. I don't like to scream about the individuals because I know they're all working so hard, you know? Yeah. And it's hard to blame any individual, even like when they become the face of something, right? The right. Diablo dude who's, you know, you don't have phones. Like that was a dumb thing to say, but it's not like it's his fault that Diablo Immortal was presented in that way. Yeah. yeah, he just wanted to present a game that he'd been working on and was really mm-hmm. excited about. Right. And like even the 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 epic you guys have phones, don't you moment that I, that's I mean, I don't think that I, I don't think that guy meant ill will. I think no, he, he was did. literally just panicking, just mm-hmm. trying to guys. I'm up here doing my job. I'm doing my best, dude. I'm doing my best. <laughs> You know, you guys have phones. You can play it on your phone, right? Come I worked on. on this game and I'm excited about it. Whoa, yeah. why is everybody so upset with me so quickly? I've never had anybody boo me before. This is new. I hate <laughs> this. Especially when I signed up to be a game developer and not a public speaker. Yeah, amen. So that's another that's nice piece of news that we have. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Activision Blizzard. Yeah. Um, I would say... Uh, or specifically Activision, Bungie. Or Bungie, right? So Bungie... Now, here's how my understanding of how it played out. I don't want to spread misinformation. This is my understanding of how it played out. They had a 10-year contract. Um, and at the 8-year mark, they were able to walk away. Um, and so they walked away from Activision, who they had partnered with for the game Destiny. Mm-hmm. Um, and since Activision was partnered with them, they had quite a bit of say in the entire uh, in the entire uh, design and, and, and monetization of Destiny. And from my industry expertise, as I have been told from people who've worked on that team or people who know people who've worked on that team, it was always very confrontational. Um, there was a lot of just kind of uh, back and forth and misery and, and contention between Activision and uh, Bungie and what Bungie wanted from their games and what Activision wanted from their games. And Activision never really appreciated the properties. They they would, when it came to earnings reports, they'd be like, Destiny made this much, but then they would also say in interviews, we're disappointed by how much Destiny made. It only made billions of dollars. We wanted trillions. Eat me, you know? Um, and the, the thing is, Destiny at its core has some good ideas, sure. um, but they were just never really fleshed out. And what was fleshed out instead was the microtransactions and the grind and all the garbage. Mm-hmm. And I think that was mostly Activision's fault. And oh, if you, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Stuff like the Eververse, come on, that had, that's all Activision, right? So I, 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 now that uh, basically they said that they, they managed to walk away and they got to keep the Destiny name. So that went back, that reverted to Bungie when they left. And the partnership is now over, and, and Bungie can now run Destiny however they want to. And hopefully that means good things. Hopefully that hope means so. good things. Um, because they've done some really cool... I've, I, I haven't played much Destiny 2, but I've been reading the forums and reading the Reddits. And they've done a lot of cool um, events 
and a lot of cool, just like nice stuff for the giveaway, a lot of free stuff, kind of like you guys would talk about Monster Hunter World doing, and I think we could see a lot more of that happening with 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 Destiny moving forward. Hopefully, Destiny 3 can be a much, much better game. I so. don't know, man. Then you got to buy it again. Just play Warframe. That game's free. Yeah. All the content is free. Maybe Destiny it's 3 all been will free be free the whole time. Right. Do they sell... So when it comes to Warframe, they don't sell expansions, right? Nope. They don't sell content. They sell... Uh, you can, like, speed up time for modding your gun. Right. You can um, buy Warframes that you could otherwise... You'd have to grind for, right? You can just buy it instead. But it's not like, oh, well, this one's new, so powerful and you can't win if you don't have it or anything like that. They're just new and different. Right. Um, and you can buy, like primed weapons and stuff like that basically you know more powerful guns that you can also just grind for see i really i do really really want to play um warframe at some point i know it's on the nintendo you switch should. now too as well but my switch is just a oh, smash machine i even bought the new mario u which i'd already played through on the wii u and i played like the first world and i'm like and back to smash <laughs> <laughs> and because uh, nothing else matters right uh but yeah warframe looks really good Pick up Warframe on the Switch, see if it's any fun. Uh, it has one of the best monetization models that I've seen. Um, my favorite being that their premium currency you can trade for in-game. Right. So if I have a lot of time, then I can you know, grind out a really good gun and then trade it to somebody for premium dollars to buy the thing that I want. And if I don't have a lot of time because I've spent it all working for money, I can just buy the thing that I want either from mm. the developers themselves, if they happen to be doing a sale on it, or just from another player. Interesting. Have you played the Switch version at all, Ellis? I have not. I only okay. ever played it on PC. Um, I don't it, want to play a game like that with two Joy-Cons. Uh, is I want to play with a mouse well, and keyboard. First of all, get a Pro Controller. Second of all, is it cross-platform? Uh, you know? It is not, as far as I know. It is okay. also available on, I think, PlayStation and Xbox. I know yes. it's available on PlayStation. I don't know about Xbox. Uh, and as far as I know, they are all separate. And PC tends to get releases like a week before everything else does, uh, though that might be changing as it's continued to move I forward. See. Or I they're see. expanding into the other consoles. Uh, so uh, I want to advocate for Destiny a little bit. I did okay. not play one at all. I played two quite a bit, and that game was pretty fun. I, uh, I fell off a bit, and I came back for Forsaken, and uh, I, I like the the mode that they have switched to for releasing content. Uh, previously, it was a couple of small expansions and then a big expansion. And each one was its kind of own little self-contained story. Uh, but instead of doing that, they are going to release content more often. And it will be kind of more overarching. It won't just be like, all right, buy Warmind. And then you do the little Warmind story and you get a couple hours of content, maybe. Uh, it'll be a little more spread out and even across the release cycle. That's That was what they were going for before. Who knows what will happen now mm. uh, that it's self-published and they get to make 100% of their decisions. I don't know if they'll decide to do something different. Yeah. I, I, I'm excited to see where it goes. I, I hope, hope so, that it right? continues to be a fun and good game mm -hmm. and only gets better from here. Right. That'd be nice. I would like to see the next Destiny or whatever that whatever it is they plan to do moving forward. But if there is a Destiny three, I would like to see a very complete game. Um, and I don't mind the expansion system. I don't. I mean, like I played EverQuest. I played World of Warcraft. Getting an expansion every three six months or, or six to months to a year was fine in EverQuest. I was happy with that actually. Um, and I was already paying fifteen dollars a month for that game. I'm willing to do that as long as it's got a good storyline, as long as it's got good content, as long as it's got interesting stuff to do. Um, and, but it was always the fact that Destiny had double dipped that frustrated me so much. It was that yeah. they had not, did not just want the buy-in price of $60, but then they wanted you to buy expansions, but then they also wanted you to pay for microtransactions. And sometimes, though rarely, those microtransactions could affect the game. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then, like, the decision to make shaders show up in the loop by, oh god, why? Why? Well, and, and and also the fact that they spent a bunch of time saying, hey, this is our system, right? Buy all of our content. Um, it's going to be great. All right, now here's Destiny 2. Do it all again. Mm -hmm. None of that shit carries over. Right. Yeah. And, well, and, and that, I hope that moving away from Activision, we will see that because that will maybe even like send a message to the, the business at large or the industry at large, right? If yeah. a company leaves something like Activision 
and then makes a better game and succeeds at it. That would be really, really good. I would like to see Bungie make a lot of money on a game that is not so rife with microtransactions or this, you know, terrible pay to win model that you're talking about. Right. The the biggest the biggest downside of this, a lot of the industry experts are saying that um we will start seeing a big slowdown in content uh for Destiny 2. Um that it probably won't be coming out as quick and we probably won't be getting as much free stuff because obviously there's not going to be as big of a budget. Right. Yeah, so that's uh, it could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. I just wish Bungie the best of luck at this point. I, I and yep. I'm just glad to see them. Activision stock fell like nine percent the day that that happened too, and they were already taking a beating. I mean, like the entire stock market is taking a beating. So Activision as a company right now is just suffering, which is a real shame because as much as I crap talk Activision, I know people at that company. They've been very good to me. They've sent some free stuff from time to time, and I know some of the people who do PR over there, and I know some of the people that work directly at the company. At one point, the Skylanders team sent me a promotional item a, 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 or a prototype for a Boogie 2988 Skylander toy. It would not be in Skylanders, but it was molded the same and it was created the same and they wanted to produce it for me. It was just the end cost for consumers would have run like 25 or 30 bucks for you guys to be able to buy it. So we never ended up producing it. Um, that said, I love Activision. Uh, and I love the people that work at Activision, but I also hate Activision's company policies. <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 nice to see them taking that beating. But the downside is, and this is what's really frustrating to me, I feel like people have criticized me and saying, you don't really know what a CEO or a CFO does. And you're correct, because I've never been a CEO or a CFO. So all the CEOs and CFOs out there, you're allowed to criticize me. But if, you, if you've never been one, then bear with me, because I've known a couple. And sometimes you get these CEOs and these CFOs who show up at a company to cash it out. We saw it with Toys R Us as a perfect example of a brand that could have done fine and continued to have done fine, but we decided to take out a bunch of loans and piecemeal the company into little bits and then never pay back the loans and put bonuses into our pockets and walk away with the money. And this is something I worry that has happened to Activision, because we saw the one CFO that just left, I forget her name, but she was all about, you got to slim down the budget, slim down the budget, slim down the budget at Blizzard. Blizzard's spending too much money. You're not making enough money, you're spending too much money. Slim it down, cost less, cut costs, fire customer service, fire these people. Why? Either that was just bad direction, or maybe she was putting money in her pocket, or maybe she was doing what she was hired to do, which was to cut costs, but it could have easily been one of those situations where these guys are like, let's let's go ahead and take all this goodwill. Bethesda just did this. Let's take all this goodwill we have. Let's create a bad product filled with microtransactions and cash in on that goodwill. And it ruins the goodwill forever. It's gone. It's done. Yep. You've spent it. I and mean, I don't know. Like, look what happened to EA, right? It's exactly the same. They have no goodwill left. And yet, as a company, they're still doing very well. Which sucks that like we as consumers are not voting with our wallets well enough. Well, we did with Battlefield Five. Uh, don't true. like it, don't buy it. People didn't. Um, People mostly did not. Right. There's a lot of competition too, as well. I mean, there's a lot of reasons not to buy Battlefield Five. I mean, you can get it on EA Access as well, so you wouldn't purchase a copy if you could get it through EA Access. But I worry about Anthem, so that's a natural lead-in because Anthem. Now that I've seen some Anthem gameplay, and I still have not seen a lot, it's Destiny. <laughs> It's it's just it's destiny. It looks like destiny and Warframe somewhat. Yeah. Right. In as it's, much as those games look similar. Yeah. It's in that vein, but I mean there are differences that could be there. I will say, uh, I don't know if you saw the the same video that I did, the uh, the the mission that they uh, went through with the three javelins. Um, it looked very much like the destiny model of uh, go to a place, press X on a thing, enemies will attack you, kill those enemies, go to the next place, press X on a thing enemies will attack you and uh that looks boring and i didn't like doing that in destiny that wasn't fun no and, and I, I don't think i'll like it here either i did some deep dive and i saw some youtubers who played it and then i saw some pirated footage from the alpha and it's pretty much all that it's pretty much like let's go here let's fly here in our armor let's kill all these monsters let's get the loot and let's move on uh, what makes a game like that fun is the combat and Destiny had some fun combat. It really did. I mean, I enjoyed uh, playing the Guardians, and I love just the, the the ults. You know, the 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 handful of powers you got, and the powers in this game look interesting, um, from what I've seen. 
So we're, I, I, we're only a I'm, month away from release, so I'm hoping to see a lot more. I put it on my top 10 most anticipated games video, which will be on my channel later this week. Um, and hopefully you guys will watch it, but I, 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 I worry. I don't know. Uh, it's also a thing of like the story can be a driving force in the game, right? The sure the actual writing, the characters and Bioware used to care about that kind of thing. They used to be really good at that sort of thing. Right. And maybe yeah. they can bring it back, right? That maybe they've heard everybody talking and saying, hey, your games are a little lame now mm -hmm. uh, on the story and character front. Um, and I, I watched a, like a 30 minute video with interviews of people who are working on the game and they were talking about it as if they really cared about making the characters and the story interesting and good and a driving force and okay. making the world a fun place to be and play in. I don't know That's that they'll hit that target, but they seem to care about that. If they're that at least be talking about force. it, yeah. And, uh, you know, the combat looked similar to Destiny, but slightly different, right? Because Destiny, basically, you shoot your gun, and you have a melee attack, and you have your ult ability, and you have your grenade. But, like, everybody kind of has a grenade and a melee attack, and then one special ability. Uh, and in this, there's a bunch of different javelins that have a bunch of different abilities. And uh, even just watching that video, right, like the javelins were wildly different than each other. Yep. One of them was like a flying space wizard that had a blink. And one of them was a ninja that just had a whole bunch of dashes and like spin attacks. And then the other one was like a big, slow Hulkbuster guy with big shotguns and missiles and just a, he looked like a walking armory. And then they said there's a whole bunch of other javelins as well that do other stuff. So it sounds exciting. I mean, it sounds like Warframe. I want it to be that we just haven't seen the things about the game that make it great. And maybe they are holding back that information because they're worried they're going to um, overblow and oversell their game. And then it's going to come out to bad reviews. People are going to like it because they're going to say, well, you said this would be here and this would be here and this would be here. And I don't like the way that it turned out. And then it gets mm -hmm. bad reviews. And they, I mean, because that's been happening a lot recently. So I don't know, hopefully it's a good game and they are just gonna quietly be like, all right, here's your good game. Here's the good game. Enjoy it. Here's the good version of destiny. Right. Yep. And then let, let the community hype it up. If it turns out to be good. Yes. They will, if right. it's good. Right. Especially with cooperative play. Yeah, absolutely. And again, and if EA is listening, um, you know, and they're not, <laughs> yeah, Joe EA, but if EA is listening, you know, it's really going to come down to how you monetize this game. I understand that you guys are not happy with the $60 buy-in. I get it. I get you want a lot more than $60 from me. I get it. If the game is good enough and you monetize it in a fair way, a non-frustrating and stupid way, a non-Star Wars Battlefront way, then I, I, I'll give you money, man. I will. I, I will. Please let me give you money. Please let me give you money. I have don't money. Don't make me feel gross and slimy when I do yeah. that. I felt gross every time I gave money to uh, Destiny. Yeah. Which yeah, I did a lot. Sucks, you know. yeah. By the way, like I, I, we, we touched on this briefly, but I do want to make it clear that when we're talking about these companies or, or anything, we're not trying to attack any individuals that work there. Boogie specifically not. said, like, I hate your company policies, and that's really what we're griping about more Amen. than anything else. Uh, I, I've met somebody from EA, you know, the dreaded EA, and he was an incredibly nice guy. And he's like, yeah, I know the kind of shit that we get, but, and he explained it. And he's like, everybody working here is a human being too. And we don't like the terrible things that get done to the, pro the projects that we work on any more than you do, but they get ground up in the corporate machine and it sucks. So, you know, I, I, I just don't want anybody in that industry or any of these companies to feel personally attacked because we know it's not your fault. We right. know it's not you doing this right. or making this decision. And I, I will go as far as to uh, tell you a fun story. I have a couple of stories, actually, uh, on this uh -oh. topic, if you guys want story time in the middle of the podcast. Story time in the middle of the podcast. I went, I, I went to several of the PlayStation experiences. I was disappointed they didn't do one this last year because I would have went. Um, they're also not doing E3 at PlayStation this year for some reason. I, yeah. PlayStation is just like, eh, E3, whatever. We don't need to be there. Why? What? Anyway. Why not? E3 is great. Yeah, E3's great, man. I was looking forward to hanging out with you guys. I guess not. Okay, I guess I'll uh, spend all my time covering uh, the folks over at uh, Xbox instead. Anyway, I'm at the PlayStation Experience, and I'm walking by, and uh, they see me, and they're like, Boogie. And I'm walking by the EA Battlefront booth, of all things. And I've already crapped all over Battlefront. 
just took a steaming dump on it. And it's been out for almost a year. Or it's been out for a year at that point. And uh, they say, hey, Boogie, have you tried the VR experience that we put into Battlefront yet for PlayStation VR? And I'm like, you know, I haven't. And I'm like, because you guys charged for it or something, I, I think, right? And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, all right, well, I'd like to try it if you guys have it set up. Absolutely, let's let us let you sit down and play it. So I did the Star Wars VR experience, and it was fun. It was great. It, I, I was inside of an X-Wing, and I'm flying, and I'm doing a mission. And to be honest with you, it was just a short little fun experience, and it mostly played like an uh, interactive movie, as a lot of VR experiences do. But it made me feel like I was in Star Wars for that 20 minutes that I was in that game. And I just loved it. I was so happy. Cool. And I finished it, and I'm like, I was raving at how much fun it was and what a great VR experience it was. And um, they're like, well, you know, we, we really appreciate your support. And I'm like, yeah, I've been kind of cruel to your game this last year. And like, and we understand. We do. And I want you to know that the corporation does not always speak for us, and we don't always speak for the corporation. We don't always get along. We're just trying to make a good game, man. And that's why we poured our heart into this VR experience, because we knew people like you would love it. And, and I'm like, well, I'll talk about it as soon as I get a chance. Every time I get a chance, this is great. I love it when you do good stuff. And I'm like, so can we talk about Battlefront 2? Because that's due out, what, next year? And they're like, yep, and you're going to love it. And I'm like, I, I don't think so. And he's like, look, we are changing the business model. And we are going to go with the Overwatch business model. There's not going to be any paid expansions. Everybody's going to get all the maps and all the characters and all the stuff. And you're going to all for free. Okay, and as we we're going to continue to add maps and add game modes and add content after release, and you're going to get it all for free. The most you can spend on this game to get content will be sixty dollars. That's our plan. But baby, I've changed. It'll right? be different this time. I promise. And I'm like, awesome, man. That's all. Like everything is going to be cosmetic. Everything is going to be cosmetic, boogie. I we promise you that. That's the game we've designed. We've handed it off to EA, and that's what they've told us that we can do. And somewhere between talking to them and getting excited, the folks at EA, the higher-ups, said, nope, it's got to be pay-to-win. People are not going to buy microtransactions. Uh, we don't want a pink Darth Vader. That's a quote from someone higher up at EA. You wouldn't want a, you wouldn't want a pink Darth Vader. No, I would like all the different Darth Vader suits there ever was. I'd like an unmasked Darth Vader. I would, I would buy all kinds of Darth Vader skins. Give me unmasked Darth Vader. Are you kidding? That'd be incredible. Oh, my God, a pay... A billion dollars for that. No, I don't want a pink one, but you can do canon stuff. Do canon stuff. I will buy the canon stuff. But that's not the decision the decision they wanted them to go in. And I guarantee you, the developers I talked to that day lamented every second of it. And I'm sure the game would have been great. I'm sure the game would have otherwise been... Because the combat for Battlefront 2 was fun, and there was a good amount of game modes, and I enjoyed the time I spent playing Battlefront 2. I despised the monetization, and that's what ruined the game, and it's possible that's what will ruin Anthem as well. But point is, the people who Hopefully make those not. games pour their hearts into those games. They truly do. And you are not mad at artist number 2,333. You're not mad at game developer... Joe 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 Jim Jam. Who you were mad Joe, at? Joe Jim Jam. Who you were mad at is the people running the show, telling them how they have to develop the game, right? And I guess you could get mad at the game developer for not walking out, but that dude's got bills to pay, and he wants to work on a Star Wars game, and he's going to give you the best Star Wars game he can within the ramifications of what he's given. But me and Peter Moore, I consider Peter Moore a friend still. I check in on Peter Moore, and Peter Moore checks in on me still to this day, and he was. Once the head of EA, for God's sakes, he presented my 2016 Trending Gamer Award to me. You can find that on YouTube right now. We talked before the the the, the show, after the show. We frequently got time to uh, to 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 javel javel each other, you know, or just like jab each other, and and we did it in in the the public ring. But he's a good guy. He's a good person. I'd love to have a beer with him. I don't like the way he ran EA, but I'd still have a beer with the guy. You know. Hmm. Yeah. So I, yeah. When you're mad at these developers, when you're mad at these games, you're not mad at the people who made them. You shouldn't be. You should. Especially be. since they probably spent six to eight months working on them before somebody from corporate just showed up, right? And like a whirlwind took everything away or told them that everything had to be different. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Because they're doing their best, man. They're doing their best. That they're corporate overlords. Like, think about any time you have ever been at work, wherever you were, Walmart, Pizza Hut, 
you, uh, Walmart corporate, you, you know, whatever, wherever it is you work, corporate, right? And you're like, I know this would make a better pizza. I know this would make a better burger. I know this would make a better policy for the company. I know this is the, the way I would do this report if we do this report differently. And your boss says, nope, you have to do it this way. And it doesn't make sense. And it's not better for the customer, and it's not better for you, and it's not better for the company, but he's the one making the decisions. You just got to do what your boss tells you to do. And if you, yeah. if you wouldn't quit that job because you, you know, want to put two extra, two extra pieces of pepperoni on that pizza and they won't let you, you know, you, you can't do it. Yeah, I'm sure they want to give away. But that's the cool thing about Destiny. Now they get to make that decision. They I are the so. corporate overlords. And hopefully yeah. they do. And they were popping bottles. That's my favorite part about it. Jason Shryer on Kotaku said they were popping champagne bottles during the announcement. Yeah, good. Yeah. They, awesome. I mean, I mean, I'm they, glad they that they're, they're happy about it. it. Yep. I hope it pushes them in a better direction. Absolutely. Yeah, one more story for you. Um, there's a guy um, during the Xbox One uh, launch. If you guys remember, there was a guy, I'm not going to say his name here. He's a good guy though, but I don't want you to go looking him up and, and messing with him or anything. But there was a guy who was leaking all the always online, no discs, all that stuff information on Twitter. And, um, when I made my Francis video complaining about the always online aspect of, of the Xbox one that went viral, um, and some people say ruined the Xbox one generation. Like I had anything to do with it is the corporate overlords at <laughs> Xbox have ruined things. But, um, he, he was the one who leaked all that information, just tweeting. And he would tweet some really toxic stuff. Like one guy's like, Hey, I work on a nuclear submarine. Will we still be able to play Madden on the nuclear submarine? And uh, if we don't have internet access and his response was like, well, why would you work there? Get a real <laughs> job. Right. And like, uh, the one that I do remember, somebody's like, well, I live in a rural area and I don't have very good internet here. And he's like, he's like, well, will I still be able to play games if I can't connect to the internet? He's like, you should move to a real city. And I'm like, man, mm. so anyway, the guy was not being exactly friendly and I called him out yeah, in my no. video. Well, years later, I found out that he toured after getting fired from Microsoft. He was touring colleges or corporations or something. Um, and he was doing a speech on what it was like to deal with online hate. And I was mentioned, apparently, in that speech as one of his online haters. Um, and what it does to you. And to be honest with you, he's a great guy. He's a good guy. And I, I feel bad for beating him up. I feel bad for ever calling him out by name. I feel bad for ever making the situation worse. I feel bad for ever attacking that individual. I feel like... Attacking the corporate policies was much smarter. And so I did see him at uh, the Game Awards uh, 2015. I saw him there, and we had a great conversation about it and about how I had negatively impacted his life. And again, I would, I, I was fair. I did point out, like, well, you're the one who negatively impacted your life because you shouldn't have said that stupid stuff on Twitter, dude. <laughs> you shouldn't have been so toxic to the potential customers. You shouldn't do that. That's not a good way to handle yourself. And it's like, and I admit that, but I also want you to admit that you negatively impacted my life. And I'm like, yep. All right. That's fair. And so since then I try to be as good to developers and, and as good to, to people working in these companies as I can. Cause they're people. Good. Everybody's a people, no matter who you hate online, they're still a person just as Everybody's important as valid as you. You heard it here first. Yeah. So there's the preachy part of the podcast. Get that out of the way. <laughs> the preachy part. Do you want a weird question? Oh, I want a weird word. question. I oh, can't yeah. think of a better segue. Yeah, let's, is... let's get weird with it. So if you guys don't know this, one of the podcast sections we like to do, we like to take weird questions from patrons, fun fans. You can always email us at thebigstackmail at gmail.com with a weird question. Now, I will tell you, we've gotten some questions up at this point that say stuff like, Oh, what's Boogie look like naked? That's, that's not particularly interesting. You ever have sex? Yes, we've also, had sex. there are pictures of you mostly naked, like, all over the place. Oh, yeah. If I could film a video of me well, on YouTube you fully naked it. and monetize it, I would sell that shit. I don't care. I'm a thought if there ever was one. Um, Two T's. But, but we like weird. We like weird. So what kind of weird questions you got for us, Jacob? Okay. The first one is from uh, from Birch. Uh, if you drink two five-hour energies, do you get 10 hours of extra energy or five hours of double energy? Ooh. That is a good question. Because, like, it might just extend the buff, right? right? 
right? Or is it like you're you're putting NOS directly into your veins? And I don't mean the energy drink. I mean that shit they put in cars to make them go fast and actual fire nitrosized. out their car butts. I what do you, th- what do you think, Boogie? I think um, I think if it was a video game, okay, then you would get double buff. Okay. I think in real life, you've just wasted a five-hour energy. <laughs> they don't stack. No, they do not. You, you don't think life. they stack at all? Mm-hmm. Nope. It just it just like refills the buff bar back up. Yeah, and if right. It was almost it's already, at, already at max. Maybe that's yeah. what you get. All you right. Did. Fair enough. Fair enough. Here's how I know because I used to abuse five-hour energy. Abuse? Like you, you yeah, would. I used to. I hit that stuff six, seven times a day, baby. When I would travel. And I would like, I, I just got to stay awake. And, you know, I remember I was 600 pounds. So, like, walking three feet made me tired. Yeah, that's the, that was, I was trying to stack. Going into the next day. And I would still, like, fall asleep in the car and <laughs> while driving and die. And that's how I died. <laughs> okay, so they only work for five hours. Somebody says you, uh, if you stack, you stack enough, you get the heart attack debuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that seems correct. Do two sleeping pills make you sleep twice as fast or twice as long? Uh... Twice as long, and probably even twice as that. long. And three makes you sleep forever. It's probably true. Really, only three? <laughs> no, it probably needs more than three. <laughs> I mean, it depends great. on you know who's taking them, right? Probably take yeah. like six for you, Boogie, and you know, like I I have to cut them up into into pieces. Did cut you them up into pieces? Cut my life into pieces. This oh, is my sleeping pills. What? A... <laughs> you did this, Ellis. This is your fault. Um, no. The great singer Elvis Presley, in an effort to lose weight, had himself put into a coma, a medically induced coma, so he could not eat for those weeks to try to lose weight. That's something he actually what? supposedly did. I don't know if it's an urban legend. I don't There's know if it's no real. way that's real. That I, sounds, I, I have been told that, that is real. To me. Um, and so it was an interesting, let's see, uh, Elvis Presley coma. Um, if this is true, though, they they said, uh, if if this is true, um, they said it did not impact him. In fact, he was so starving when he came out of it, and so desperate to eat, uh, that he ended up gaining weight from the from the yeah. exercise. So don't do it. Don't do that. Don't. I mean, even if somebody does that. offer to put you into a coma to lose weight, don't don't do it. Somebody offers you a free coma, decline. Listen to this. Okay, listen to this. this I'm imagining so that on like a van. Like, hey, kids, you want to get a coma? Come one on of, over to my van. One of his favorite sandwiches in the world was a peanut butter, bacon, and banana sandwich, a flavor a combo that has been recreated on menus across the world in homage to the king. Yeah. Sandwiched between two pieces of white bread fried in butter, it was a decadent concoction. Ooh, they're delicious. It's he a was, good sandwich. Yeah. He also made what he called a fool's gold loaf was another favorite of his. It's a PB and J sandwich on steroids. A fool's gold loaf consists of a hollowed out loaf of sourdough bread stuffed with an entire jar of peanut butter, an entire jar of grape jam, and a pound of bacon. Not forgetting margarine first and deep frying it afterwards. Do you think that, he at least took it out of the like jars? <laughs> or was he just stuffing just it all shove in Shove them there? all in there, man. Bacon That's... wrapped meatballs. <laughs> Things Elvis ate. Jacob, <laughs> you got another weird question for us? Oh my yeah. god! Yeah. Or does uh, does any of any of the wonderful emails contain? Uh, a question. No, I, I have a, I have a weird question for us. What is the weirdest thing you have ever done while brushing your teeth? Yes, this is a competition. May the weirdest host win. Oh, it's from okay. uh, from our good friend name? Mal. It's from Mal. Thank you for that question. Thing I've ever done. I don't know, Jacob. Do you have a do you have a pre prepared answer for this? Well, I think about all the times I've brushed my teeth and what the weirdest thing I got this I'm one to, admit to having done on the internet is. I got this one one. So, all right. Well, we'll oh, let yeah. Boogie go last since he's feeling confident. Uh, uh-huh. I haven't done anything super weird. I definitely have cooked bacon. You cooked bacon while brushing your teeth? Yeah, that's extra weird to me because presumably you're not gonna then eat the bacon. Oh no, I ate the bacon. Why don't you just wait to brush your teeth? If you're going to eat anyway. Ellis, who the fuck plans that far ahead, man? Uh, look, I understand you don't have I to live like my life all of your life moment to moment. moment. To moment. Okay? Uh, all right, Ellis, you go. So when I 
uh, how old was I? I was probably like 14 or 15. I went on a, a camping trip up into the mountains of Arizona. It was a lot of fun. But I was gone for about a week and it's really windy and kind of like cold and dry up there. So my lips were, I want to say like medically chapped. They were de- like, I'm surprised that I don't have scars left from this thing. And I didn't think to bring any chapstick. So when I got back, my lips were, you know, like scabbed over and healing and stuff. So I was brushing my teeth while applying chapstick at the same time because I just needed a constant supply of Burt's Bees all over my lips. And that's pretty that weird. Challenge, but that was more like an exercise in dexterity. That no, that's pretty weird. Cause the cause the the toothpaste, the the leavens, the like toothpaste leave leavens on your mouth, and it's just gonna like you're gonna have to wipe it off, and you're gonna have to reapply it anyways. How do you the toothpaste leavens? How are you brushing your teeth? Like just uh, apparently <laughs> two more, ag- more aggressively you than back, you, man. You just you just gotta See leave back. See what goes down your throat? No, no. no you put no. your tongue back there. Okay, look, this is getting out of hand. You I need a seal. I need to hear Boogie's answer before this Boogie, gets what if, what's too the crazy. What's the thing you've done? Because this is gonna start a fight. I think extracted my teeth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Because well, all right. Because I've like, always had multiple? like yeah, like multiple at once. So uh, so here's the thing. I've always had really, really bad teeth. And to be honest with you, because they were so painful and bled so much after that accident when I was a kid, I would just mostly use mouthwash three times a day. So that meant tartar built up made everything way worse. And I certainly wasn't flossing because there was so much misery. It was just so bad. And so one day I I, I was uh, having a lot of tooth pain. And I'm like, man, I need to just, I'm going to get in there and I'm just going to start grinding on this tooth to get as much. Oh, it hurts so bad. It's Oh, my God. And then it just crumbled. <laughs> so I was brushing it. And so I I brushed the I brushed the you debris brushed away. The tooth out of your skull. Yeah. I brushed the tooth out of my head. Uh, it's, it did not that's stop. That's the most it, horrifying thing yeah. I've heard of. Well, I, I, you know, people have had dreams where their teeth are falling out. Let me tell you, that's my life. That's happened to me all the time. I had a tooth, uh, one of these front teeth. I don't know if people have noticed in the videos of the streams or not, but I had a, a front tooth recently break a little bit. And it's it's one of the ones on the bottom, so it's kind of harder to notice. And a lot of people are like, Boogie, why don't you go to the um, dentist? And it's because it's one of my biggest phobias. I don't. I hate the dentist. It's one of my least favorite places in the world. And so I've tried to go to the dentist three times in the last six years or so since I've had some YouTube money in the pocket. And I get there, and they take my blood pressure, and they're like, all right, so Mr. Williams, we can't do the surgery. And I'm like, why? And they're like, because your blood pressure is 290 over 180. You need to go to the emergency room right now. And I'm like, but I'm telling you, as soon as I walk out of here, my blood pressure is going to go back down. And I have. They would send me to the emergency room and make me go, and I would go to the emergency room, and they would take my blood pressure, and it would be like 130 or 150 over 90 or one, you know, it would not be good because I'm a big, fat, unhealthy person with a heart condition. But the whole time I'm in that dentist chair, my heart's going, because I'm panicking because I have an anxiety disorder. And so they gave me Xanax to take with me. And they're like, dude, just hit the Xanax, man. And you're, you're going to feel so much better. A doctor just, said that to you? Yeah, it's yeah. exactly. He's like, look, I'll give you some Xanax. Xanax. He had one of those hit coats with like pot leaves all over it. Right. And he's like, yo, oh, man, right. you just got to calm down. And so I got the Xanax and they took my blood pressure and still like 200 over. And they're like, look, you're, you don't have to go to the emergency room, but you are definitely not ready for this. And I'm like, dude, I'm high on the medicines, though. <laughs> And they're like, yeah, it doesn't, it's not, doesn't matter. I'm like, but dude, the tooth, take the teeth is out, please. <laughs> Cause Xanax just makes me super tired. So you need a, you need a like dentist to make a house call. Oh, I need, a, what I need is for someone to knock me unconscious while I'm sleeping and then do a dental surgery <laughs> and wake up with new teeth. You're sleeping? Yeah. I yeah, because if he's that's... awake, he's going to fight it. Right, that's what I'm saying. If he's asleep, he's already unconscious. <laughs> yeah, but I want to stay unconscious. <laughs> Please do a takey out of the teeth now, okay? So eventually, eventually, I'm just going to have to find a dentist who's willing to risk me having a heart attack. The other thing was I, I have only been back once since I lost uh, mo- the majority of the weight. But prior to it, they were like, we can't put you to sleep. We can't put you under at your size. And I'm like, why? And like, Because if you fall out of the chair, we are not getting you back in. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, also, can you breathe if you're knocked out? And I'm like, oh, I do sleep on a CPAP machine. They're like, yeah, so how do you wear a CPAP machine while we're working on the inside of your mouth? And I'm like, oh, oh that's a good yeah, point. that's a really good point, dude. Mm-hmm. That's a good point. 
So they're like, you could just suffocate, and uh, we can't give you CPR. You weigh 9 million pounds. You fucking whale. <laughs> and I'm like, please just take the hurdy tooth out now, because I what don't like What kind of doctors are you pain. going to, man? They seem all over the map of incompetent. It's just yeah, dentist. Really no, no offense to any dentists listening out there, but I have not had a lot of positive dental experiences. They've, it's all been like, really, they just kind of. Look, we don't hate the the individual dentists. No, okay? I'm just They're I haven't had medical practices. Had a one. That's what we have the problem with. Right? Yeah. Well, I don't hate any individual dentist. I love you specifically. It's the way you run your business because you won't takey the toothy out. Please do takey the teethy. Here Zanex is my makes mice. you talk like a baby, yeah. which is weird. Yeah. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, I would like to talk about Resident Evil Two. Ooh, so yeah. So you played the demo, huh? That today. Yeah, so uh, I played the demo today. Ellis was at my house. He watched me play the demo today. And I am still on the fence. I cannot decide if I want to pay full price for that game. Uh, it looks really cool and good. Uh, it looks very pretty. It looks like a $60 game. Uh, I feel weird paying $60 for Resident Evil 2 in yeah. 2019. I almost said 2018. Yeah. Oh, you almost look like a 19. fool on the internet. I almost look like a fool on it. So the, the, the demo lasted for 30 minutes, and at the end of the 30 minutes, it just kicks you out, which was weird. I was kind of yeah. hoping that they would just, like, because they advertise it as, here's a one-shot demo. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, they'll let me, they just, like, cordoned off a little area, and they're going to let me do a few things, and then whenever I'm done, it's over, and they're like, all right, now go buy our game. Mm-hmm. But that's not what happened. It just ended after 30 minutes. So, you know, I didn't speed run this demo. And so I didn't get to finish it. Right. So I don't know if I can, like, go back in and, like, start over and go faster. How, how, far, how far can you get in 30 minutes? I mean, I guess I could just, like, down, like start it on another account or whatever. So here's what's interesting about that. Um, uh, over a million people, according to their website, I'm getting this off of Reddit, over 1 million people have played the Resident Evil 2 demo. Only 29% of people completed it, and it's because of the 30-minute timer. So there is a completion point of the demo. You can complete the demo, and then it's oh, like, hey, go buy okay. the game. But they also put a 30-minute timer on there because, I don't know. Why? What I was yeah. thinking? Well, yeah, it. why did they do that? So I didn't get to finish the demo, so I, yeah. I'm going to have to like go back in and like retry it. I don't know. Maybe the fact that I'm willing to go back in and retry the demo means I should buy the game because it because I like it. I want to play that game fun watching you play it. Yeah, it, it like looks cool. It looks fun. I never played Resident Evil 2. I played the one remake a lot and I played four a lot. Uh, so to get into it a little bit, uh, this game plays pretty similarly to Resident Evil 4, uh, but it is the Resident Evil 2 story from what I understand. I don't know if they're, if they've like added stuff or changed stuff because I like, like stuck I said, in a police station, which is a weird place to be stuck in. So, yeah, but, you know, we were talking about this earlier. That's kind of a, a, a thing about the Resident Evil games. Uh, you get stuck in a weird place that doesn't match. It's just like what you think it should be, because this police station looks like a crazy town hall with like a weird cult statue yeah. in it and all these like like rolly doors. I don't know. It's <laughs> it's fucking wild. It's weird what they think a police station looks like. It's also but, huge and built like a maze. It's humongous, but I mean, like, it's it's the thing of they're like, well, we don't need it to look like a real police station because that's not necessarily a fun video game. So we just made it look like a fun video game thing, and they were just like, ah, whatever, it's a police station, get cool. over it. And that's that can be fun, right? I, I yeah, like absolutely. That. I don't I don't necessarily want realism. I want a fun game, mm -hmm. and it did look very fun, and visually it looked good as well. Like you said, uh, it, some people have complained that like the characters look too pretty, but. I don't know. That's that's a weird complaint to have, right? They're definitely high res. They all look good, well voice yeah. acted. I don't know if they got was the original Resident Evil Two voice acted at all. I didn't play it. I don't know. So I don't. I'm remember. interested if they got the same voice actors or new people, but they were talented. I uh, I did see a post of uh, somebody who turned the graphics on PC all the way down as low as they can to make it look like a PlayStation <laughs> One game, and it kind of did. All right. <laughs> Which is pretty entertaining. Play the way you want to play. Play the way you want to play. Um, so one of the things that is making me hesitate on buying this game is uh, there's a $60 version, which is the basic one. And then there's like a $70 version that is a deluxe version that comes Ooh. with extra items. I'm not, cheese? I'm not clear what the items are. I, and I'm not into a, a remaster game that also has a deluxe version. 
yeah. like a full price remaster and right. a deluxe version. Mm-hmm. I do hope they, um, I do hope if the deluxe version has the option of getting the original voice acting though, because the original voice acting is so bad. Okay, yeah. so it did have okay. at least voice lines. Jill, there are zombies inside of the house. Let's get a, no fighting them. <laughs> did okay? Did two have FMV? Because I I vaguely remember the original Resident Evil One having FMV. I haven't played it. I've only ever like seen it, like seen other people play it. I have no idea. But it had like wild FMV stuff that I am super into, and I really wish they would bring back. I feel like we I were like past FMV that a lot, by the time Resident saying. Evil 2 was out, but I don't know. Maybe. It had an FMV intro, says Scottish Geek Plays in the Twitch chat, so he might know. Okay. Yeah. It makes sense. I, I'm i familiar with this person, and it makes sense that they would know that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I don't know. I mean, like, you know, I'm, I'm ch- I basically what I need is somebody to convince me to get it, right? I need, like, <laughs> one person to say, hey, this is get good. It. You should get it. And then I'll get it. I'm I'm weak, is what um, I'm trying to say. One piece of criticism I do have is that the original had that really cool camera style um, where they just put the camera somewhere in the room and then you walked around the room. And I get that they wanted to make it more atmospheric and let you explore the rooms and stuff like that so you can do the whole um, over-the-shoulder thing this time, right? Um, I hope there's a first person mode as well because I'd prefer a first person over over the shoulder. But uh, I, I I really do feel like when I watch the old game get played, that's what made those games so creepy and disorienting. Was the camera was pretty much you know static in whatever part of the room that you were in, and right. and you couldn't look at everything. And I get that's not how modern games are designed. I understand all that. I I get the modern gamers may not like that, but I would like that as an option. That would be a cool option to have that locked back down because I feel like yeah. you're really losing something there. Though I did, Maybe. I loved. It's gonna be a different I, experience, definitely. I loved Resident Evil Biohazard, but what I loved about Biohazard was the family and the characters and the story and just how messed up that game was. And the last half of it, when it became very Resident Evilly, I did not enjoy it. The the first half mm. is amazing. Yeah. So I don't know. I I am on the well, fence of Resident Evil Two as well. I I do want to buy it. Maybe we should all buy it, and maybe we should all play it, and maybe we should talk about it and make. Them, that's that's a good idea. So to to reason. speak to your to your thing about like you wish that the the camera angle thing and uh, you didn't like that they that they changed it to be more like Resident Evil Four, which was a wildly popular Resident Evil game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I used the word remaster earlier, and it's definitely not a remaster. They they did make a new video game. They just used Resident Evil 2 as the blueprint to make this new video game because it is very like different graphically. They had to rebuild everything so that this camera angle would work. So, right. you know, saying that it's, oh, it's just a remaster, that's not fair to the developers or this game. Mm-hmm. It is a lot more than that. It is a new video game. Uh, just t- retelling a story that you've already seen before, possibly. But I haven't, so, so I'm. It's it's like brand new to me, and same. it looks quite fun. So yeah, maybe we'll play it together as a family. Yeah, that we'll sounds good. About it. Why couldn't that have come out for Halloween? So it could have been our Halloween game this year, because that would have been amazing. Did we play a Halloween mm-hmm. game this year? I don't. We know. tried. The we tried good. a couple, and they were all real bad. Yeah, mm-hmm. this is hard that to find a, a good one. That happens a lot. Yeah, make us another. Um, what was that one that we played? Uh, that was so good. The one we with the butterfly really, effect thing. We really liked Until Dawn. Yeah, Until Dawn. Give me some Until Dawn, man. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Inter- uh, interactive horror movie games are great. Other interactive movie games, not so great. Yeah. But then again, I did like Detroit, so I don't know. But I, I you know, the horror genre is tough. Like, the comedy genre is really tough. I played yeah. a game that had some really good comedy elements on it um, this last year. Uh, and I, I, I highly recommend it if you love the retro style games, like the old 8-bit or the 16-bit. It's called The Messenger on um, Nintendo Switch. It's also available on PC. I, I don't know where else it is. But The Messenger, which won a couple of Game Awards, has a really funny comedic style and is really tongue-in-cheek throughout the entire game. Like the little demon that steals the gems when you die and like the shopkeepers and, and all the other... Like there's a really fun... like it's, it's, It feels like horror is hard to do. It feels like comedy is hard to do, you know? Horror is extremely hard to do. Uh, I think one of the reasons that Five Nights at Freddy's was so impressive is that generally the only way that horror games succeed nowadays is by having 
gruesome, you know, Cronenberg weird graphics of horrible monsters. And this guy had no budget. So he was able to make a game that built suspense based on its mechanics. And that was pretty cool to me. I don't think I want to play five of them, but the first one was really unique. It was interesting. And for one indie guy to just build that, he might've had a team. I'm not sure. That's really cool to me. So it's definitely possible, but it, it takes a lot more creativity to scare a player right then yes especially if you don't have the budget for jump scares i will say that alien isolation is probably the scariest game i've ever played did you get either of you play it no what is that yes so, so basically you are stuck on a ship you're playing i think you're playing amanda ripley if i remember correctly um and there is a uh, xenomorph on the ship and you need to avoid it at all costs to try to get off the ship um and so that would not be a very interesting game. So you don't have a lot to fight. So you also got to fight some corrupted droids from time to time. And the droids were uh, scary from uh, occasionally, but you literally couldn't do anything about the alien. Like the alien, if it found you, it would kill you. And the alien had a uh, really solid AI set. And so frequently, rather than it being scripted, um, the AI would try to figure out where you were. And, and it would have, it would have some scripts obviously, but because it's AI, but you would end up having to hide inside a locker or hide under a table. And then there were some scripted elements where it would nearly find you a couple times. Um, and the the intensity of that game was through the roof. I just, oh my God, sometimes when you saw the alien across the room and, you know, it walked by a doorway and you would panic and you know you've got to go hide from the damn thing. Um, and you've got to, because there's nothing else you can do except hide and, and find the right hiding spot and try to avoid it to get past it. Just incredible. It was so, such cool. a good suspense building game. Um, and then had the, the proper cooldown areas where now I'm dealing with droids for a little while. Now I'm trying to deal with the ship exploding and burning. And now I'm trying to deal with this. And then, oh my God, there's the alien. Oh my God, what do I do? Oh, I got to find a place. Where do I go? Where do I, how do I get by it? Oh my God. Yeah, it's great. Such a good game. Cool. That sounds really exciting. Yeah. I'll give that a shot. They are making yeah. a sequel to that game. Oh. Whoops. On mobile. Uh oh. Oh no. Maybe it'll be fine. Maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be fine. Maybe it and Diablo Immortal will turn out to be amazing games and we'll all feel well, like real idiots well, for shitting on them so hard. The important thing is they are also making a traditional Aliens game to 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 possibly launch at the same time as the mobile one. But the mobile one does look like it, it was it, it does look like a direct descendant because it's Amanda Ripley again in this new mm-hmm. one yeah so that's what that's is, scary it's the I, same character right all right so i i don't know maybe that formula would fit mobile okay and maybe it's kind of like they say it's a brand new premium experience maybe it'll be like a ten dollar game with alien isolation and you hide from the alien and there's not much shooting and it's it would fit well on mobile and then there's like a real game coming mm-hmm. out, out at the same time i'd be okay with that please get that right you know, because I, because that again, that's Warner Brothers. Is that the ones who are doing that game? Do you know? Is it Warner I, Brothers? I think so. Yeah, that sounds right so. to me. Because that Warner Brothers owns the Aliens franchise, right? Yeah, that's got to be right. Um, because I have a little secret to tell. I may or may not. I'm trying to. I may or may not be next week going to the launch, uh, to the reveal of Mortal Kombat 11. I'm trying to go. I don't know if it's going to work, but, um. I'm trying to go to see the Mortal Kombat launch uh, reveal. And if I get to, it might be an opportunity for me to whisper in Warner Brothers ears, hey, don't screw this up. And talk about what made Mortal Kombat 11, uh, made Mortal Kombat X not so great and what made it good and talk about ways to monetize it without screwing everything up. So Right. Oh, and- uh, yeah, uh, Fox Fox owns uh, the Aliens franchise. Okay, that's interesting. I, I don't know if the, I don't know who is making the games. I I don't know. Right. Oh, and speaking of Mortal Kombat 11, you were just telling me news that I had not seen yet. Who got confirmed for Mortal Kombat 11 today as a guest character? Pennywise the Clown. Yeah, yeah. it looks like which it's is interesting. I hope he has a Tim Scurry skin. I hope he has a Tim Scurry Tim Curry skin. Oh yeah. Oh, that would be interesting. If yeah. you've got the Scars Guard and the Curry skin, then you can... The Curry skin. Well, okay, that came out a little weirder than I meant it to, but you know what I meant. <laughs> yeah, Scars Guard did a great job. Uh, yeah, but, you know, it was a very different Pennywise. I appreciate that. I'm glad that he did not try and 
be a Tim Curry Pennywise. I right. think that would have been a failure. Right. Not that, you know, he's not talented or nobody can do it like Tim Curry. I just think it was a good idea to have them go in different directions. Right. And no spoilers, but if you have not seen the the classic or if you've not seen the original classic, it you really can't go back and watch it because it just doesn't hold up. Um, so the only one you have is the Skarsgård option, which is kind of a shame. But I will tell you, uh, Skarsgård portrayal of Pennywise was the worst part about it. The rest of the movie, incredible. Really? Yeah, but Skarsgård is just... <sighs> As a Stephen King fan, it was tough. You know, because I've okay. seen... Like, number one... Uh, okay, minor spoiler here, but uh, in the books, he takes all kinds of different forms. He's not just a clown. Mm-hmm. In the movie, he's pretty much just a clown. There's a few moments where he's transformative but very, very few. And it's frustrating because, I, I, you know, I wanted, like, if you're going to do a more traditional uh, look at, at him and, and go a little bit closer back to the book, then have him do all the different forms, mm-hmm. right? And now, I, do you think, like, you say his portrayal, do you mean that you don't like the way that Skarsgård chose to portray him, or do you mean that the direction that he was given? Skarsgård did a great job as the direction he was given. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the speech impediment was weird. Um, like the whole voice was just was like, what are we doing here? What is this? Why is it? Why is he having like his lisp and stuff? It's like, hello, Georgie. Do you, oh, God, it's got to be creepy for people listening on headphones, though. <laughs> Do you want the balloon? Oh, uh, well, okay. Yeah, this, I kind of get what you're going for there, but also, but I mean, he is, you know, he does some transformative stuff. I'm not saying he doesn't, but I, I don't know. But I'm looking forward to the second movie. But yeah, putting him in Mortal Kombat 11, I'm so excited for Mortal Kombat 11. I must, I, I feel like I'm one of the only people on this podcast that's excited about that franchise because you guys watched me obsessively play 10, and then of course, of course yeah. I obsessively played uh, Injustice 2. Yeah, I um, played a lot of Injustice 2. I, yeah. I like that game. But you did not, you loved Injustice 2. You did not care for the Mortal Kombat franchise, if I remember though, right? Like you didn't care it's for 10? It's fine. It's fine. It's yeah. not necessarily my, my bag, but uh, it's fine. I, I will play it with you for sure. Yeah, I picked 10 back up um, because if I am going to this thing, I want to be at least a little good at it. And I wanted to get the Smash Brothers out of my system. So I'm not like trying to like up smash, you know, dudes in Mortal Kombat. And I I forgot how good it flows. It just flows so well. I've never been one to be able to do like the 10 hit combos in those games, which is frustrating. But when it comes to like fighting the computers or fighting at lower levels or fighting one of you guys in the living room, I love how it's just kind of I'm hitting you, you're hitting me and we're coming back and forth. It's not as chaotic as smash Mm -hmm. and it feels it's just got a really good flow to it. Cool. So I'm looking so forward the, the to what Eleven's doing different. Last Mortal Kombat game I played was Mortal Kombat Two. How how similar? You know, if I <laughs> if I pick up Eleven, do you think I will recognize the series? Do you think we we'll get back to its roots? It's like riding a bike. All yeah. right, you got well, this. The core is still there. The sweep kicks and the uppercuts and all and the jump kicking. It's all exactly the same as the original kicking. Mortal Kombat, though. Uh, you're gonna. It's gonna introduce a lot of new mechanics, including the the the, the power bar system, which you can use for X rays, and then it's of course got like the charge versions of special moves. But you're gonna be throwing fireballs exactly the way you were throwing fireballs in number one, exactly okay, cool. the same way. Yeah. I heard there's a third dimension to it now as well. That's pretty exciting. How you mean? It's not just sprites. Oh it's yeah, like yeah. It's 3D. like nice 3D models. They're sexy, dude. And they're wow. gory. It's so gory. It's so. <laughs> 10 is so gory. It's just, I, I can't believe how disgusting that game is. Because so I went yeah. back to it, and I'm like, man, this game is gross. Um, and then I did, like, just a couple of my favorite fatalities. And I'm like, wow, this is awful. <laughs> how did they approve this game, right? But America does, you know, like the new version of uh, DOA, censored as much as humanly possible. We can't show part of a boob. But if you rip that boob into little pieces... <laughs> You can put it in a Mortal Kombat game. You can't show it in a brawl. But if you reach into the chest between those boobs and pull out a heart and feed it to Cassie Cage, that's okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's okay. I mean, yep. Sure. Yeah. Why not? Well, you know, society, bottom text, and all can that. I, so I've been thinking a lot about this DOA nerf. And the only thing they're really nerfing is the jiggle physics in the costumes, okay? It's weird to call that a nerf. Right, I call it a nerf because they're nerfing one of the my favorite things about the games is that the girls are pretty and that they you know you you can knock the clothes off of the dudes and the girls and it's, you know it's fun it's fun to do that to me but um, that's something they're taking out of the series for DOA six and I get a question and this is going to be controversial and it's fine and this is going to give me a lot of trouble and that's fine here's my question okay why are we doing that I I don't understand like. Is it so that more women will play the game? Is that it? Is that the goal? 
I think it's probably because political climate, right? Right. That's what it is, right? Because some things I, used I don't, to be more acceptable and they aren't anymore. I don't think there's going to be very many girls who are going to be like walking by a, a big display at Walmart that says DOA six is now out, less boobs in it, and they're going to be like, oh, now I'm yeah, finally going to try it, that. right? Like that's I don't think that's going to happen. And they don't here, care about that. They don't even really care if there are boobs in their game or not. They care right. about what people will write about online. And here's my million-dollar question. Here's my million-dollar question, okay? All right, everybody pay attention. Are women big, strong, awesome women who can handle anything, which is what I think, or are they weak little creatures that need to be sheltered from boobs in a video game? Because I think I, I don't think, think that's the correct argument. That's a weird point right? to make. Like, like, why do we need to change this video game so that we don't offend women or upset women? Or I don't understand. Because I don't it, think right? that's the point. Yeah, it's not, it's not all about oh, we we wouldn't want to offend a woman. The point is, we don't want to upset journalists. Is, <laughs> that's the point. I mean, sure, that's part of it, right? Yeah. Like that's the that's the tinfoil hat. Is like, well, journalists are big on that shit right now, so we gotta we gotta watch out because we don't want them to get upset with us. But another part of it, like if, if you want to talk about the actual morals of it, is like when you have, you know, if that game is designed for young men and that's all who sees it, then it gives them unrealistic expectations. And I don't just mean about like, oh, I thought her boobs would be bigger. I mean about what is okay and what is not okay. It's not necessarily okay, all about that's offending fair. women. It's about that's teaching fair. men right. or lack thereof. Right. But that same kid um, ripping the heart out of Sub-Zero and eating it in a video game that doesn't well, teach you a negative if, lesson. If one is okay. I mean, like those are different things. I'm just right? saying, yeah. I'm just, I, I'm just saying like, I, I, I don't believe there's very many kids out there who are going to be like, Hey, it's okay to rip people's hearts out because it's also okay to look at tits and DOA. I don't think that I, you know, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't think Our culture handles those differently though. And that's, that's what I'm upset about. That's exactly. what I'm upset about. That's actually what I'm upset about. I'm not upset about making the world better for women. We should make the world better for women. Women have a tough time. I believe that. I truly believe that. What I'm upset about is, is 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 the outrage machine and why everybody's outraged. And the fact that the folks that over at DOA are doing this just because they don't want to upset journalists. That's what it really comes down to. It's not going to make the world better for women. I really genuinely don't think it will. I, I, I Maybe think, not individually. Right. I think a shift in that culture can because the, I think it absolutely. can make the world the better news, for men and women. The good news is I don't think it's going to make the game worse. So why no. not? I guess and that's fine. Shit, that's right? fine. We right? don't lose anything from it. Right. I right. don't feel like I'm going to lose much from it. I will definitely lose something from it. The I other guess. thing is, like, if even if you don't think it will make a, the world a better place or help in any way at all, someone somewhere does think that it will, and right. that's worth something, right? Someone yeah. else is trying to do something to make something better, so we should be happy well, about I, that. Well, I hope it does. I hope, I mean, it probably will make at least one journalist be like, man, I feel heard today, and that makes me feel good, and good. that's good for that journalist. Um, but hopefully, on some level, Hopefully somewhere out there, there will be some kid out there who will be like, now I don't want to misogynize. I don't think sure, it's going to happen, right? but maybe it will. I don't, I mean, it's not about like just this sudden cathartic moment. It's a shift in culture. That's how these things happen. It's slowly. It's not like when you take jiggle physics out of it, suddenly young boys aren't going to be shitty anymore. It, it, it all happens as this giant big process and un that's unfortunate because it's complicated and it's hard to talk about and that's not what the internet wants they just want a simple solution that they can tweet about in 250 characters or less i wonder if i wonder if they'll pull up ea here <laughs> it wouldn't be cool if they pull an ea and like there's no jiggle that's physics that's a weird in, sentence yeah they, there's no jiggle physics or sorry I, I call of duty black ops 4 is what i should say and there's no jiggle physics at launch but then two weeks later, they add them like uh, they did microtransactions in Call of Duty. Oh, okay, got right? it. Right, and like wait or, till all the reviews are out. DLC. They drop out of a loot box. Hey, you you have to equip Jiggle Physics all to right. your fighter. There you go. And you have to pay money to do so. Mm hmm. Oh God, you have to a loot box for a pair of tits. You get three different sets of tits. <laughs> or because I think didn't they have like they had like really sexy dudes in that series too. Uh, and what, for and the, one of the most part, yeah. Yeah, one of the screenshots sure. I've seen is still of a shirtless dude. So they still have shirtless dudes in this game. They're still beefcake. Uh, this is what I mean about, cheesecake. like, who cares if they remove it? It's not like DOA had some serious integrity and it's losing it because it's taking out j Jiggle Physics. It's going to be the same fucking game. Yeah, which and is a fun It's That's a, fun a weird game. reason to a buy fun. a game in my book. 
Yeah, I get that. But one of the reasons I like Mortal Kombat is, and I don't, I don't play the DOA series because I like the nudity or whatever. I don't really care about that. I didn't buy like uh, the SNK version on Switch, the SNK fighter games with the pretty, pretty dress up dolls. I didn't bother with that because that's not why I buy a video game. I do prefer Mortal Kombat because it's ultra violent. That's why I like it. That's why I like it. So if I can feel that way about the violence, and certainly there's somebody who feels that way about the sexiness, certainly, and I can empathize with that person. That's what I'm trying to do here. You know what I'm saying? Because okay. I don't personally care. I don't personally care about anything. Honestly. <laughs> all right, a, then. Take away everything all the time. Who cares? It's whatever. Just, you know, I'll just live in a padded room and just wait to die there. Who cares? Nothing matters. But <laughs> it's kind of dark. Yeah. Maybe but, don't, I, don't take jiggle physics out. You're killing people. I yeah. mean, maybe the, the developers have just decided like, hey, we think that a lot of the people who buy our game are no offense, Boogie, like Boogie in that <laughs> they just want to see boobies bounce. And uh, that's really it. And we're actually kind of uncomfortable with our video game being the booby physics game. Uh, and we would like people to see our game for the fighting game that it is. Now, if that's what they said. Maybe. I don't it, know. That's it's not what they said. But if no that's what they said, I would be 100% on board. I'd be like, hey, man, it's your artistic design. You do you, man. I'm 100% on board with whatever you want your game to be. Well, I, Maybe I, they got sick right. of drawing jiggly boobs. Maybe they want some integrity. But from what, I, but from what I've read... They're doing it so that more women will buy their game. That, from what I've read, that's the plan. I mean, that's that sounds like the most cynical and realistic version. Yeah. Right. Right. All right. Well, well sure. we, we like won't... I talk a big game about like, oh, you know, we could we can have this moral cultural shift, and that would probably be a, a, a good thing. That's not why it's really happening. It's it's happening because they don't want to piss off journalists because then people write nasty, mean articles about them, and they lose money and they get in trouble. I will. I would love to eat crow on this one though. Right. Like, sure. I would love if DOA 6 comes out, right, and then women gravitate heavily towards it, and then it becomes the eSports game. It comes, becomes the WNBA for women. Uh, you know, this is the fighting game at the Evo WNBA every year. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, it's like, you the, know. That's the it's, W. It's, 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 right. It's, well, so it's this would be... The, at Evo, this would be the the Wevo then the W E V O right the Wevo. Right. But like men are allowed to compete, but the problem is they are completely outclassed by these women who love DOA six so much. Like these dudes can't even make it into the qualifying rounds, and it just becomes the number one female esport. And then those women spill out into esports everywhere, and it all starts with this one game. How amazing would that be? That would be great. I would love for that to happen. Yeah. I think that would be fantastic. It's not going to though, but it would well, be great. probably not. Yeah. But it's it's again, weird. It's a gradual process. It's not just a fucking snap your fingers thing. It's weird to uh, classify an esport as a gender specific thing because like that has nothing to do with anything at all. Well, right. I'm not saying you would classify it. It was. It's not like you would only allow women to play it. That's not what I'm sure, saying. Sure, sure. I'm I saying that it just like everybody's like, wow, man. All the all the competitors in that game are like women because women really gravitated towards this game because they took out the physical physics and that's amazing. <laughs> that's a far flung future that you yeah, can keep wishing for. To get there. But that is the future <laughs> that DOA Six has designed their game for, <laughs> and that's crazy to me. That's yeah, crazy. I don't think that's true, but all right. The future they designed is let's try to make uh, as much money as humanly possible. Yep. The point that I'm making is what a good year for fighting games because you have Smash Brothers. Um, yeah, and that was yeah. last year, but that's yeah, I mean, going to be within a year. You got, basically the same. you got DOA Six. You got the Animu Fighter. What else we got this year? My God, the fighting Animu games. Fighter? It's so funny because when, when we launched, when we launched this gaming, fighter. yeah, Smash. What's it called again? Shonen Jump Force. Is yeah, the Jump Force. Fighter. Yeah, and so out of all the out of all the at the beginning of this console generation, I was like, where are the good fighting games? Like we imported over Justice uh, or Injustice, it made like a PlayStation Four version, right? And then Xbox had. Uh, I'm sorry to the folks who made it, but I didn't find it very good. But there was a new um, Killer Instinct, and it was fine. You know, I had a weird free to play model. That's what mostly killed it. Hmm. Um, and I was like, man, there's not going to be any good fighters this season or this year. Oops. <laughs> No, it's a lot. Yeah, it's so good. Like people are like Blaz Blue. I'm like, I don't even know what that is. Blaze Blue. What are, what are you talking uh, it's about? It's Grain Blue. It's Grain, Grain Blue. Blue or whatever. Yeah. What are you talking Blue about? It's also a game, right? Yes, or it's another Arxis game. Oh, another okay. anime fighter. Got it. There's a lot of anime fighters. I mean, the, people in animes fight a lot. There's That's lots true. of fight about in There's anime. A lot of fighting. Actually, back when I watched anime quite frequently, you know what they mostly did? They talked about fighting. 
I don't know if that changed now, right? But like the early Dragon Ball stuff I saw was like one of them going, oh, in just a couple of minutes, I'm about to fight. But before I fight, I have to think about why I'm fighting. And then the other guy like, oh, I'm getting ready to fight that guy too. And I'm going to talk about why I'm going to fight. And I need like, Boogie to do a redub of the entire original <laughs> Dragon Ball series. Right, but without knowing any of the context, I'm just looking at the pictures. Oh, of course. Right? That's the yeah. most important right? part. Exactly. And like, I'm hiding behind this rock because if I don't hide behind this rock, I won't have time to talk about why I need to fight this guy. And the guy's up in the air. He's like, where are you? I think you might be hiding behind that rock, but I'm not going to check because we can't afford to animate it. You know? <laughs> like, I don't know. It was. Always, I didn't, that's why I did not like the fighty style animes. That's why I like the comedy animes, and I like the sexy animes. Not necessarily like the hentai or whatever, but I did like the ones that like this, the goofy... Oh My Goddess, for example. That's a good example. Kind of a comedy. Tenchi Muyo, that's another good example. There's parts of Tenchi. I, or I remember sexy. Tenchi Muyo being on TV. I don't think I ever watched it. Ronma, I remember Ronma one half. Toonami. I remember Toonami, yeah, with Tom. Do you guys remember mm-hmm. Ronma one half? You ever see that one? Nope. Uh, that's the one that the guy who turns into a female yeah. and then like his dad turns into a panda bear. Yep. Yep. They, oh. they, they took bass and for some reason that's springs. weirder to me that that would happen in the same world. Well, so, okay. So what happens in there's these magic it's springs it, and if something dies in that magic springs, it's soul is put into that spring. So if you bathe in that spring, you now, whenever you get wet, you will turn into the, the thing that died. So the pool he right. ended up in, he turned into a girl um, uh, because the girl had drowned in that pool, but a panda had drowned in a different hot springs. So that's the one his dad ended up. In. Uh, so whenever well, they get wet, can I go to thing. that a panda can also go to? Mm. Well, I'm sure it was hundreds and hundreds of years ago. Man, you stumped us with that one. Holy <laughs> shit. Yeah. I, I, there was probably. I, wait. So that took place like. I thought Ranma was like a modern day thing. It well, was. Well, no, but the panda. But the panda. Died. It drowned in the, the thing a long oh, ass time ago. Right. Okay. And its soul lived in the. I'm explaining your and show. And it was just I waiting for somebody even, to, to I didn't hop even in watch. There? Yeah. Why not? Well, uh, it's anime. Man, I, there's I mean, an anime about a guy who wins every fight with one punch. Who the fuck knows, man? Again, who that's knows? a good one though. That's that one's that that's actually really interesting. That's I like crazy. Did you know they made like a one punch man version of um the Yakuza series that Tim Jim Sterling talks about all the time? Oh that was really? really good. Yep. It's supposed to be really, really good. I need to play some of those Yakuza games. They seem like the kind of thing well, I play. Didn't. No, it's not no, it's Fist I... of the North Star. It's not One Punch Man, it's Fist of the North Star. Uh, okay, that makes more sense to me. It's hysterical. I watched him play it. Hey, we're getting raided right now on Twitch. We're filming this live on Twitch. So maybe we should wrap this up for the podcast. We've been over a little bit of an hour, over a little more than an hour, guys. I hope we got some interesting gaming news for you this week. We didn't really have a theme going into it, but we really did. Um, just want to talk about the current news, talk about life in general a little bit, talk about the Patreon, and don't forget, you can go to patreon.com slash thebigstackpodcast to support us there. You can always follow the boys at the uh, their Twitch channel at uh, twitch.tv slash big underscore breakfast, and I would love it if you did. Nailed it. You can Nailed follow it. us on the YouTubes there at the Big Stack Podcast. you got to search for that because we don't have a custom URL just yet, but we will eventually. Um, and any way that you guys choose to support us. And the good news is, yes, if you are watching this on YouTube, we do have a SoundCloud. Now we will link to that in the description box below. And the first episode, I think, has now been accepted to iTunes, so the rest should come much and I quicker think the now. the second one should be soon. Right, and, and uh, this please, one will be up very, very soon as well. So there's lots of different ways to listen. That. Rate, rate and review on iTunes. That helps yep. tremendously. And if you choose to listen to us on one of those alternative formats, the iTunes, the, the podcast, the SoundClouds, wherever else we end up, um, consider hitting that Patreon, even at about, at about a dollar would make a difference. And uh, already 50 of you have totaling us about $120 a month right now. And the plan right now is to give as much of that money back to you guys as we can to thank, thank you for listening. Also, we're getting about 10,000 or so views per episode on the YouTube channel, which is amazing for a brand new fledgling channel. We're so grateful for it. So let us know in the comment section below if you are watching this on YouTube or elsewhere. You can send us that email or let us know on Patreon what topics you want us to cover. And we're always interested in alternative styles of content as well. Do you want us to do movie reviews? Do you want us to go watch a movie and then come back and sit here in exactly the same format and do it as well? Do you want us to play the same video game and talk about that, get into the spoilers, go deeper dives? We are interested in making alternative content um, as well as highlights from time to time, maybe animated highlights, stuff along that lines. Let us know what you think about all that in the comments section below. Uh, Jacob, got any closing remarks? Uh, no, I just want to thank everybody for listening and showing up, and I love all of you guys. And, same for uh, me. 
maybe I'll make some kissy noises at you in a minute. Personally. All right. Oh, Jacob's going to make kissy music? I'll be quiet. Maybe. All right, be quiet. Guys, no, no, thanks for watching. Kissing. We love you this very is much. It's an ASMR podcast now. And we'll speak with you again soon. Goodbye. Goodbye.